Hello again everybody, this is Chris Ostrowski from Avout, and in this video lesson we're going to go over a fundamental piece that DBAs and developers need to understand about Oracle, and that's the Oracle architecture. This is a very high level video, we're not going to drill down into a lot of the specifics, but a lot of the things that we talk about in this video, like the init.ora file and the background processes, and I'll have other videos that go into detail in each one of those aspects. But for now, this video is just intended as a very high-level video so everybody can understand exactly how the Oracle architecture is put together. So what are the things that we're going to talk about in this video? We're going to talk about what is architecture and specifically how it relates to Oracle products. One of the key things that we need to understand as a DBA is the difference between storing stuff in memory and storing stuff on disk. Oracle is optimized to use memory as much as possible, but obviously we can't fit our whole database inside of memory, so we have to go to disk occasionally to save off any kind of changes that we've made to our database. But Oracle is going to try to optimize as many things in memory as it possibly can, and understanding how Oracle does that is going to be essential to working as a DBA and making sure your database is tuned properly. We're also going to take a brief look at the Oracle background processes. And the Oracle background processes are a whole bunch of programs that run in the background that make sure that everything that's happening in, in memory and everything that's happening on disk stays synchronized. And again, understanding how those background processes do their job is absolutely essential for making sure your database is tuned properly. So let's take a, a look at the fundamental question of what is architecture. In terms of running an Oracle database, there's two things that we really care about. It's how the database software runs, how it was installed on your actual system, and how the database instance is designed. We're going to spend most of our time on the second bullet point, how the actual database is instance is designed. And that's going to be a key determining factor as to how much flexibility we have for um, making changes to the database in the future as the needs of our organization and our users change, and how easy it's going to be for us to uh, make changes so that the database is secure and that it's running well. So let's take a look at the instance architecture. And again, what we're talking about here is how the actual database instance is designed by you, the DBA, so that it runs properly. There's three main pieces that we need to concern ourselves with. Memory, disk, and the background processes. As we'll see, memory is much faster than uh, accessing information on disk. So Oracle is going to try to do as much stuff in memory as it possibly can. Unfortunately, we can't keep our entire database in memory. Years ago, that may have been true, but databases have grown so large that it's virtually impossible to keep your entire database in memory. Oracle will keep key pieces of it in memory and do as much, as it, as much processing as it possibly can using memory, but occasionally it'll have to go out to disk. And like we said earlier, background processes are those programs that run in the background that support Oracle that make sure that everything is synchronized between what's going on in memory and what's going on at the disk. So if we take a look at system architecture, and we do a quick pros and cons comparison list between memory and disk, the obvious pro of memory is speed. Accessing information in memory is way faster than accessing information on disk. The biggest con, obviously, is the cost. Memory is much, much more expensive than disk. Prices are starting to get a little closer together, but as of right now, storing information in memory, uh, the, the amount of memory that you have on your system is way more expensive um, than disk. The obvious benefit of disk is cost. You can have a tremendous amount of disk space on your system relatively cheap. And of course, the obvious con of working with disk and writing information to disk on a regular basis is that it, it, the speed, it slows everything down. So 
Oracle will try to do as much stuff in memory as it possibly can, but occasionally it will have to write information out to disk. And how all of these things are coordinated together is through the Oracle background processes. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. One of the key aspects of an Oracle database is something called the SGA. The SGA is the system global area and that's a piece of memory that Oracle is going to allocate for itself when the database instance is started up. It doesn't really matter what's going on inside the database. If the database just gets started up and there's no users connected to it or if it's been running for a long time and there's a tremendous amount of activity going back and forth. The system global area is an area of memory that Oracle is going to grab for itself and that's what it's going to use as kind of its scratch pad to do all of its operations or as many operations as it possibly can. So on a typical server the memory looks something like this. When the operating system starts up it grabs a, a chunk of memory and then there are drivers so that the operating system can communicate with uh, the keyboard and the mouse and the network system and if there's a soundboard in the system and the video then services are started that support the operating system there's obviously other programs that run on a typical server. And then when you issue the startup command to actually start up your database, what Oracle does is it reads a file called the init.ora file, and there's going to be another video on that so that you can see all the details of what goes on there. But based on the parameters that are set in the init.ora file, Oracle will go ahead and allocate a big chunk of memory for itself, and this is what we call the SGA. The parameters for the SGA are defined, like we said, in the init.ora file, and we'll have another video that takes a look at that file. But that's what's going to determine how much memory Oracle grabs when it starts up. Again, the size of the SGA really isn't affected by the number of users who are connected or the number of transactions that are going on at any particular time. It's really affected by the init.ora file. So Oracle grabs this big chunk of memory and then it uses it as a scratch pan and again it's going to try to do as much stuff in memory as it possibly can before it has to write anything out to disk. So when, Oracle, uh, when an Oracle DBA issues the startup command one of the first things that Oracle does is like I said it goes through and it allocates all of these uh, pieces of memory that make up the SGA. Then Oracle goes out to disk and it starts to look at the data files that make up the uh, make up this particular database instance. It does some checks to make sure that all of the data files are in sync with one another and that none, there's no corruption or anything like that. And then it starts up these background processes. There's a whole bunch of different background processes. There's ones called uh, PMON, the process monitor, SMON, the system monitor, DB writer, the database writer, log writer, check pointer, and there's more depending on what options you have installed inside your database. All of these different processes make sure that what's happening inside the SGA and what's happening inside the data files stay synchronized together. And they're also designed so that if something really bad happens to your system, like there's a power outage or if one of the data files gets corrupted or goes offline or something like that, Oracle DBAs can go on there and recover their instance relatively easily. All of these different processes are there and they're uh, there for a specific reason. And again, that's to help you as a DBA in case something catastrophic happens on your system, you can still recover your database relatively easily. And in upcoming videos, we'll take a look at those processes and how we can understand how those processes work. The init.ora file also specifies a lot of other things that you can use on a regular basis. Things like backup and recovery, security, performance tuning, creating and monitoring databases. We're going to use all of these different processes and uh, values in the init.ora file to help us do those types of things. And making sure that we have availability for our database. That's one of the key things is making sure that users can get to the database and it's available for us even under the different circumstances. In upcoming videos, we'll take a look at all of these different pieces, how to set up the init.ora file, how to look at values inside the SGA, how to tune your database to make sure that it's functioning properly, how to look at all the different background processes to make sure that they're functioning properly. 
Hopefully this gave you a good background on how the basic Oracle architecture is designed so that it um, can give you as much availability as possible and to make your job as easy as it can for you as a DBA. Understanding how all of these pieces work together will make you much more valuable as a DBA inside your organization.